This is breaking news from Local 3 News. Good evening. We are glad you're watching Local 3 News at 11. I'm Calvin Sneed in for Cornelia Nicholson, and we do begin with breaking news tonight. We're following a possible drowning at Haig Mill Park in Dalton tonight. Both the Dalton Police and Fire Departments on the scene right now responding to that report. Dalton Police say a 26-year-old male was with his brother-in-law using kayaks in the water. The victim had apparently taken off his life jacket near a dock on the lake. They say at some point the victim swam out into the lake to retrieve a kayak. That person reportedly got tired and started calling out for help. He eventually went under. A person fish fishing on the other side of the lake called 911 just after 7 p.m. tonight for help. When first responders got there, they say there was no sign of the victim. The park is closed to visitors. There's no indication of foul play, and we'll keep you posted and let you know what we find out. Chattanooga police investigating a shooting yesterday afternoon. Officers responded to Brainerd Road near South Germantown about 5 p.m. and found a 24-year-old man with a gunshot wound. He was taken to the hospital about 5 o'clock. The hospital says his injuries are non-life-threatening. No other details available. If you know anything about the shooting, Chattanooga Police, 423-698-2525, and you can call anonymously. Lake Winnipesoka has an update about an employee recently injured in a riot accident. Back on Tuesday, authorities say a Lake Winnie employee fell off the Wave Swinger ride and was taken to the hospital. In a social media post, the amusement park says the employee is now out of the hospital and plans to go back to work soon. The post goes on to say it was not a ride malfunction that caused the accident and quote, the state of Georgia annually inspects our park and similar venues in the state. For a facility to open and operate, any identified issue must be corrected before operation, unquote. Local 3 News had previously reported the Wave Swinger ride had a violation for seat conditions during an inspection last year. The family of a 16-year-old girl who died at a Dalton, Georgia Youth Detention Center three years ago, now suing Gilmer County and several employees over her death. The family says the girl was denied care that would have saved her life. After her arrest back in August two years ago, charged with drug possession and theft, Alexis Sluter suffered a medical emergency from drugs taken earlier in the day. According to the lawsuit, she was not taken to a hospital and she died about seven hours after she was processed at the detention center. A Whitfield County grand jury indicted the former director and nurse at the detention center along with three former guards, all of whom were named in the lawsuit and accused of violating Sluter's con constitutional rights. They were all fired, also facing charges of child cruelty. Well, scattered rain around the area. Meteorologist Audrey Shirley joins us now at the Weather Center. Audrey, I came through some sprinkles earlier tonight. I would call them sprinklets. <laughs> Yes, we definitely had some sprinklets for sure. We had about a tenth of an inch of rainfall within Lookout Mountain, a high of 88 right here at the station, 89 for the high in Trenton, 88 in Riceville, almost two inches in Delano, my goodness. So we did get a decent amount of rainfall, but we're expecting more rainfall for tomorrow too. And we did reach today's three degree guarantee. So we added $10 in the jackpot and hopefully we can do the same thing tomorrow with a high of 86 degrees. So another warm day in the Tennessee Valley and another muggy day tomorrow too. Now, within the, within the past few hours, there have been a few scattered showers uh, that are already starting to taper off a bit. So throughout the overnight hours, we'll be good to go. Within the next few hours, even these showers are just going to continue to move towards the northeast, but we won't be seeing much of that overnight. Now for tomorrow afternoon, that's when we'll really start to see more of those storms start to develop. It's 81 right now in Chattanooga, a very warm night, 70 in Murphy, 74 in Blue Ridge, 74 in Altima, and those dew points are in the 70s, except for Murphy at 60. So it is very muggy and it feels very sticky out for today too. And dew points are going to continue to be in the 70s throughout the evening. And that humidity is up there too. And now I'll talk more about your full forecast and what you could expect as far as the timeline goes for storms tomorrow coming up soon. Calvin. All right. Thank you, Audrey. Well, the Ben Miller Park in Hamilton County had its grand reopening today. The park has some upgrades. It now has a dog park, a pickleball court, a basketball court and a community space with walking paths to Food City, allowing nearby residents access to a grocery store. Many speakers at the grand opening, including Chattanooga Mayor Tim Kelly 
and Hamilton County Mayor Weston Womp. Also, Councilwoman Raquetta Dotley, who helped make the upgrades possible. She says Ben Miller is now more than just a park. And that's what we want to see, communities coming together. Uh, if you take a look back further, you'll see a walking path that take you right up to Food City, to uh, the, the uh, health center. So this is not just a dog park and pickleball court, but it has provided safety, public safety, for those who need access to health care, access to food. She says the most important thing the upgraded park can offer now is access to other activities. Another park grand reopening, Lynbrook Park is now officially open. The park has had been an abandoned flooded lot just off Main Street in Chattanooga. It's now an active park with one of the largest insect pollinator gardens in the city. The opening celebration highlighted the transportation, uh, transformation of that abandoned lot into a neighborhood park to be cherished by thousands of people. Mayor Kelly also present at this new park, speaking to us about that transformation. This is a really classic example of taking something that was an eyesore and a problem and making it into something uh, that's truly, truly extraordinary. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. The mayor says water runoffs have been reduced to a nearby creek that flows through the park and a native plat habitat as Chattanooga strives to become America's first park city in the nation. Well, the Purpose Outreach Center held its fourth annual Back to School Bash today. Families were able to get back to school supplies and backpacks. They were also served hamburgers and hot dogs and other refreshments. Kelly Andrews directs the Nehemiah Project. She says the only way to make this project successful is teamwork. We have a number of community partners within the city and that's where we feel that we can meet the most needs. No one's trying to reinvent the wheel. No one's trying to do something someone else is doing. We're just working together. And in case you missed it, Backpack Chattanooga has more events planned for next weekend. Other schools to be visited with more school supplies. You too can support teachers this weekend when you donate school and classroom supplies to the Hamilton County Schools Teacher Supply Hub. The hubs are located at various Walmart locations in the Chattanooga area. A hub spokesperson told us, tells, uh, told us today that the most needed supplies are pencils and crayons. We visited a hub this afternoon and spoke to a local scout leader about how important it is to invest in our kids and their teachers. As parents, we gotta uh, gotta think we have to equip our teachers with the with the the right tools if if we want the uh, right outcome from our kids when they grow up. Now, if you didn't get a chance to donate today, you can still do it tomorrow at the locations that you see on your screen there, uh, and the time is from noon to 5 p.m. Well, coming up, several parks opening in Chattanooga. As we said, if you want to be adventurous, enjoy the last fleeting weeks of summer break. We've got you covered.
Well, if you're looking for ways to get outside and soak up these lazy, hazy, crazy days of summer, we've got you covered. Local 3's Catherine Vaughn has more. Catherine. Whether you're looking to hang out with friends or family, or you just want to get outside after all the rain we've been having, Smith Perry Berries has the perfect opportunity for you. But act fast because tomorrow is the last day to enjoy it. Sunflower picking, homemade treats, photo opportunities, and lots of activities to enjoy. Owner Abby Smith says it's a great way to connect with community. I think everybody, we don't charge anything to come, you know, look at the sunflowers. Um, it's just, you know, people, kids love it. The, the families love taking their family photos here. There have been people coming for years now getting photos. So grab a friend and head on over. They'll be there from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And be sure to check their Facebook in case any bad weather rolls in. And if you couldn't make it but don't want to miss out on those seasonal activities, don't worry because Smith Perry Berries already has more planned for the fall season. You can expect to find activities like pumpkin picking, barrel racing, hay rides, and more starting the last weekend of September. In studio, I'm Katherine Vaughn, Local 3 News. Okay, thank you, Katherine. Those sunflower fields are just beautiful this time of the year. Well, coming up on Local 3 News at 11, a deadly attack on Israeli territory. We've got the latest. This is Local 3 News Weekend. Welcome back overseas now to what be, could be a major escalation in the Middle East. Israel says at least 11 children and teenagers were killed after a rocket struck a soccer field where they were all playing. It's the deadliest attack on Israeli territory since October 7th. The Israeli military blames Hezbollah and is vowing to respond. Meanwhile, in central Gaza, at least 36 people killed, including 15 children by an Israeli airstrike on a school where displaced families were seeking shelter. 
The U.S. CIA director is in Rome tomorrow to talk ceasefire, and those talks may become more intense if there's tension between Israel and Hezbollah. Well, to politics in this country now. Tonight, we're getting the first look at battleground polling since President Biden dropped out of the race for president. Could not be any closer. In the battleground states, Trump and Harris now tied in Michigan and Pennsylvania. Trump inside the margin of error with just one point, with a just one point lead in Wisconsin. And Harris is actually leading Trump in Minnesota by six points, which is outside the margin of error. The former president was in Nashville today stumping for support at a Bitcoin conference. Laying out my plan to ensure that the United States will be the crypto capital of the planet. Vice President Harris was also on the campaign trail this weekend, headlining an 800 guest fundraiser in Massachusetts, raising more than a million dollars, according to a campaign spokesperson. And ours is a fight for the future. And it is a fight for freedom. The vice president also sending a recorded message to Generation Z-led Voters of Tomorrow Summit in Atlanta. Well, if you've got several inches of rain at your house and the grass in the front yard is still brown and crunchy, meteorologist Audrey Shirley says there's a good reason for that. Yes, that's true. It's because we haven't gotten as much consistent rain. We've just been getting buckets and downpours just on end and we're going to be expecting more tomorrow too. Now we are still in that severe drought for the majority of our viewing area. Now portions of Murphy. So for uh, Cherokee County, you guys have that moderate category and also for northern portions of Georgia and Alabama. You guys are under that moderate category still too. So we're all still under a drought right now and thunderstorms are still likely for tomorrow with a slight flooding risk in place. And then that heat index is going to climb right back up later this week. It's 81 degrees right now in Chattanooga. So very warm for this evening. 74 in Blue Ridge, a bit cooler in Murphy at 70 degrees, 74 and Ultima 80 degrees in Scottsboro. And within the past few hours, we've seen a few of those scattered showers already start to dissipate across the Tennessee Valley and overnight for, for the Overnight hours, there won't be anything to worry about, just a spotty shower or two for the next few hours, and then we'll be good to go. And then going into the morning hours, we'll have a slight break, just about a 10% chance for a spotty shower or two, and then going into the afternoon and the evening hours. That's when we're expected to get more torrential rainfall. We're talking a lot of rainfall. We're talking between half an inch to an inch of additional rainfall across the Tennessee Valley for tomorrow. And even for the overnight hours, we're expecting a few of those showers too to continue. Going into tomorrow morning, or pardon me, Monday morning, that's going to be a similar pattern, except this time we will have some rain in the morning. And then with this rain, we could also have some scattered showers and thunderstorms too. And then those are going to clear out uh, later on Monday. Now going into or by the end of Sunday evening, so by the end of tomorrow night, we're expecting between half an inch to about an inch of rainfall across the Tennessee Valley. And that's that's letting us or that's why we have a slight risk in place too for that flooding threat for tomorrow. So if you are driving tomorrow, if you're not sure what the depth of the water is in the road, make sure not to drive through it. Go ahead and turn around. It's not worth the risk. Now, speaking of rain chances, we are we do have a few chances just for the next few hours, and those will taper off for the overnight and even for a little bit of the morning hours, and then they'll climb right back up for the afternoon and the evening hours when we get to about a 60% chance of rain for tomorrow. Now, tonight it'll be warm and muggy, 73 degrees for the low with another pop up shower possible just within the next hour or so 73 degrees for Chattanooga 70 in Dayton 66 in Altima 70 in Scottsboro and going into tomorrow it'll be another similar weather pattern day where we have more spotty showers and thunderstorms except this time we do have that slight flooding risk in place 86 degrees for tomorrow's high in Chattanooga 83 in Murphy 81 in Blue Ridge 85 in Cleveland a bit cooler in Altima at 78 degrees and that humidity is unfortunately not going anywhere it's still going to be up there so it's going to be very muggy for the next seven days to come, unfortunately. And for the rest of the week, temperatures are going to be in the 80s until we hit Tuesday, 91. We're back in the 90s, even 97 for Thursday. Calvin. All right, thank you, Audrey. Well, uh, straight ahead on Local 3 News at 11, the Atlanta Braves snap their skid against an NL East rival. Braves win, Braves win, Braves win. Well, plus Chattanooga, <laughs> Chattanooga uh, GAFC back hoping to get back in the win column for the first time since early June. Samantha Casano has highlights and post-game reaction from Finley Stadium coming up in sports.
yeah, it's, it's tough. It's not fun going through this, I'll tell you that. Well, to put it lightly, it has been a terrible week for the Atlanta Braves. It's, as Samantha is going to tell us in just a few minutes, entering Saturday, the team had lost six straight games for the first time since September of 2017. Now, that just happens to be the last time that the Braves missed the playoffs. But hey, as Samantha would say, we've still got plenty of ball left this season, so don't you worry. Atlanta desperately trying to get back into the win column. Spencer. Oh my goodness, swelling back. Did I say that right? Looking to build off his career high eight punch outs last Sunday against the Cardinals. Spency holding up his end of the bargain early. Seven Ks through the first four innings. Well, it might be a good idea for the offense to kind of help him out. Marcelo Zuna heard him loud and clear. Top four, two outs. The big bear cranks one to left field. Braves go in front one zip. Very next batter, Matt Olson. It's about time he gets hot. Am I right about that? Well, another ball to left. This one over the orange line, which means home run. Back to back Jackson, Atlanta leads two zip. Well, more runs certainly cannot hurt. Next inning, man on second, Orlando Arcia shoots the ball over the head of Mark Ventios at third. That's enough to drive in Sean Murphy. Okay, let's jump to the seventh because it's Eddie Rosario's turn to go yard and he did it actually. The Braves third dinger of the day, double digit strikeouts, seven strike or shutout innings for Spencer Schwellenbach, a career performance for the rookie. The drought is over. Atlanta beats the Metropolitans four zip the final. I mean, the stuff has been great, but his mentality, um, he, he doesn't seem phased by anything. Um, being a rookie in the big leagues is not an easy thing to come up and, um, you know, have that kind of control. And um, he's been the same guy every start, good or bad, and uh, that's what's impressed me the most. With the win, Atlanta moves back up to that top NL wild card spot, a half game above New York. The Braves have a chance to go for the series split when Reynaldo Lopez takes the ball on Sunday. First pitch at City Field is set for 140. For the first time in 2024, the Chattanooga Lookouts have won four straight games. They sweep the doubleheader with the Rocket City Trash Pandas. Thomas Farr was great in game one, allowing just three hits and fanning eight batters over the first four innings. The Lookouts win that one six to three. Red sixth ranked prospect Chase Petty threw an absolute gem in game two. Six scoreless innings, two hits, six punchies. Austin Hendricks RBI single in the second inning proved to be the difference. Chattanooga officially takes the series from the Trash Panda series finale is tomorrow at 5.05. The Chattanooga Football Club was back at Finley Stadium for the first time in three weeks and boy were they in need of some home cooking. The boys in blue had dropped their last four matches. They hadn't picked up all three points since back on June 1st. CFC welcoming in Orlando City B. Nothing much to see in that first 45 minutes. Let's pick things up in the second half. Alex McGrath with a few opportunities, but he's not able to cash in. That is until the 57th minute. The captain finds the back of the net. CFC goes in front 1-0. Gene Antoine was fantastic, pitching a shutout for the first time since that last win. Spoiler alert, the boys in blue go on to win 1-0. Our focus was just to get back to our football. Our focus is just to get back to the ways that we were capable of playing and, you know, get back to even raising the level of hard work. One of those where I sort of fell over and I just heard the, the crowd and that's how I knew it went in. I thought it had a decent chance, but at the end of the day, just to, to get the three points, it's been it's been a, a tough tough few weeks and we've been working hard throughout it, so it's just nice to, to pick up the three points. So with the win, CFC moves into fifth place in the Eastern Conference standings. The boys in blue will be back at home next weekend to host Toronto FC2. But I got to say, uh, meantime, the Chattanooga Red Wolves were on the road facing the club at the top of the USL League One standings. That was not a problem. The Wolfpack shut out Union Omaha 1-0, moving them into sixth place. That lone goal coming in the 74th minute from Pedro Hernandez. Chattanooga will be back at home next Saturday against Central Valley Fuego. Calvin, great job pinch hitting there. Yeah, we had a little, a little <laughs> mic, but one of the mics didn't want to play. So, uh, Calvin, <laughs> hey, 
We got it. <laughs> Thanks, Samantha. Let's take a last look at the weather, Audrey. Yes, well, tomorrow we have more chances for rain showers and thunderstorms. We're expecting about a half an inch to an inch of rain across the Tennessee Valley, and that is going to be posing a flooding risk for the area, too. There is a slight risk in place, so a level two out of five. So tomorrow when you're driving, if you do happen to run into an unknown depth of water, I can't emphasize this enough. Do not drive through it. Turn around. It's not worth it. And then it'll be 86 tomorrow too, 88 for Monday. And then for the rest of the week, we'll still have some chances for some thunderstorms until we reach Thursday. But my goodness, it's going to get warm, especially with heat indices back between 100 and 105 uh, beginning on Wednesday and Thursday. So we'll, we're going to need to, you know, take a look at that later on, make sure uh, everyone's safe to go and everything like that because of this heat and humidity. It's going to be back in that dangerous category later this week. Not for the weekend though. Okay, thank you, Audrey. That's the news on Local 3 News at 11. There's more Olympics coverage coming up in just a few minutes. Good night and have a pleasant tomorrow. Yeah, it's, it's tough. It's not fun going through this, I'll tell you that. To put it lightly, it has been a terrible week for the Atlanta Braves. Entering Saturday, the team had lost six straight games for the first time since September of 2017. That happens to be the last time the Braves missed the playoffs, but hey, we've still got plenty of ball left this season. Don't you worry. Atlanta desperately looking to get back in the win column. Spencer Schwellenbach looking to build off his career high eight punch outs last Sunday against the St. Louis Cardinals. Spencey holding up his end of the bargain early, seven Ks through the first four innings. Might be a good idea for the offense to help him out. Marcelo Zuna heard that loud and clear top four, two outs. The Big Bear cranks one to left field. Braves go in front one nothing. Very next batter, Matt Olson at the plate. It's about time he gets hot, am I right? Another bottle left, this one over the orange line, which means home run. Back-to-back -back jacks, and Atlanta leads to zip. 
More runs certainly cannot hurt. Next inning, man on second, Orlando Arcia shoots a ball over the head of Mark Vientos at third. That's enough to drive in Sean Murphy. Let's jump to the seventh because it's Eddie Rosario's turn to go yard. The Braves third dinger of the day. Double digit strikeouts, seven shutout innings for Spencer Schwellenbach. A career performance for the rookie. The drought is officially over. Atlanta defeats the Metropolitans for nothing. The final. I mean, the stuff has been great, but his mentality, um, he, he doesn't seem phased by anything. Um, being a rookie in the big leagues is not an easy thing to come up and, um, you know, have that kind of control. And um, he's been the same guy every start, good or bad, and uh, that's what's impressed me the most. With the win, Atlanta moves back up to that top NL wild card spot, a half game above New York. The Braves have a chance to go for the series split when Reynaldo Lopez takes the ball tonight. First pitch at City Field is set for 140. The Chattanooga Football Club was back at Finley Stadium for the first time in three weeks, and boy, were they in need of some home cooking. The boys in blue had dropped their last four matches. They hadn't picked up all three points since back on June 1st. CFC welcoming in Orlando City B. Nothing much to see in that first 45 minutes. Let's pick things up in the second half. Alex McGrath with a few opportunities, but he's not able to cash in until that 57th minute. The captain finds the back of the net. CFC goes in front 1-0. Jean Antoine was fantastic, pitching a shutout for the first time since that last win. Spoiler alert, the boys in blue go on to win 1-0. Our focus was just to get back to our football. Our focus is just to get back to the ways that we were capable of playing and, you know, get back to even raising the level of hard work. One of those where I sort of fell over and I just heard the, the crowd and that's how I knew it went in. I thought it had a decent chance, but at the end of the day, just to, to get the three points, it's been, it's been a, a tough, tough few weeks and we've been working hard throughout it, so it's just nice to, to pick up the three points. With the dub, CFC moves into fifth place in the Eastern Conference standings. The boys in blue will be back at home next weekend to host Toronto FC2.